experience with others to sort of pass that on. So with that, I will pass it on to Art and let him uh, introduce himself, and then we can get started with a talk about, we can chat about chat GPT. There we go. Well, uh, thank you everybody for coming out. My name is Arthur Lowe. I have a whole introductory slide, so you guys will get to know a little bit more about me. Um, make sure I'm on team so you can see me. Okay. All right. Uh, Cool. So uh, the purpose of this um, uh, brain boost is to basically get more familiar with ChatGPT. There's a couple of reasons that you'll see inside here why I think everybody should take advantage of this because it's emerging technology and um, you can either sit on the early adopter, the, I guess, mass adoption or the tail end where you become a late, late adopter. There's a lot of opportunity here, right? So. A little bit about me. I am the uh, VP of Demand Generation or Marketing for uh, an agency called Marklon. I'm a Trekkie, a self-proclaimed uh, bro master, and my wife back there, Amanda, will argue with you and let you know that I'm not, but <laughs> self-proclaimed, right? Yeah. And I am also the chat GPT evangelist of Cowork Frederick, right? So when it first came out, it came out in November. Uh, by January, there was whispers, and then I dove right in. I mean, I got got into as many courses available, you know, did my whole YouTube university and learned as much as I can. So I rolled up my sleeves, and then when I realized the maximum amount of potential, uh, you couldn't shut me up about it, right? So, <laughs> so uh, let's level set. The Terminator is not coming. Everybody, you know, you either sit on one side of the fence or not, right? You think that AI is a Terminator, it's not. There's a... Uh, Essentially, the tech is not there, machines aren't conscious, and ChatGPT, as amazing as it is, um, has its limitations. AI is more so like Rosie from the Jetsons, where you're able to converse with it directly, have direct input, it's free to get started, and uh, new features emerge every day in order to expand its use and functionality. Right? Can it take care of my kid and hand me a glass of wine? <laughs> Not yet, but look out for Boston Dynamics in the integration of ChatGPT. All right. So uh, today's agenda, we're really going to talk about what ChatGPT is. Uh, I figured the best way um, to really kind of explain it is to go through real life use cases and uh, how it has helped me, you know, sitting and managing different aspects of marketing. I would probably dovetail in with a lot of what people are doing right now, like content creation, writing, thought processing, you know, anal analyzation, ideation. Um, so I have real use cases that I use in order to uh, make it more real, right? And then again, we'll have some questions and answers. So, what is ChatGPT? Is it amazing or is it just a fad? To me, ChatGPT is. Um, or AI, really, it's not really ChatGPT anymore, it's AI, there's so many different models, but um, we're sitting at, uh, I think, a new era of productivity and work, right? Our relationship with work is going to fundamentally change. ChatGPT, it's a powerful AI language model, only three things you need to remember about it. It was created by uh, OpenAI, the technology had been around, but OpenAI basically said, everybody get this, use it as you will right now, back in November, right? November of 2022. It also generates human-like responses with input prompts. So if you're a coder, you may know, you know functional inputs in actual programming language. You don't really need that in order to interact with ChatGPT, right? You can actually, the way I'm talking to you, please give me this or please can you do this? It'll respond to that and it'll understand uh, that, in, that level of input. That's a huge jump because for every one of us that's not a coder and not like, uh, I guess, technically apt, uh, this kind of, I don't want to say level sets, but it makes it a little bit more um, engaging and available to us, right? It has the largest, or used to have the largest, data set of contextually relevant and coherent answers, right? So its knowledge base stops at two, uh, 2001, right? But everything up to 2001, that from philosophy to math to science to jokes even, um, uh, ChatGPT can give you information or some sort of insight uh, towards it all the way up until 2021, right? So keep that in mind because um, as advances... Sorry, did you say 2001 or 2021? Two, oh, sorry, 2021. Sorry, okay, not 2001. Yeah, that's kind of old, yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah, no. That wouldn't really help. Um, but just keep that in mind because there's additional functionality, 
right, that extends it beyond that. So you can actually add additional layers that people have built upon that to kind of go out to the web and get real-time information, but it's like it's knowledge-based right now is all the way up until uh, 2021. So the reason why I think um, we need to pay attention to ChatGPT is because when you really look at the usage stats, there is a huge disparity amongst the people who are actually using it right now. And like it, the demographic information of the users, and when you think about the total number of users uh, as of May, this data is as of May, so 173 million active users, right? The largest proportion of the users is 15%, and it's by uh, you know us in the US, right? Um, source of this is uh, exploding topics, right? But if we look at the demographic, demographic breakdown of who's actually using ChatGPT, and this is a study by Pew Research, uh, just 14% of adults have actually tried ChatGPT. So uh, you can look at it from the adults' perspective, men versus women, you know, racial um, uh, demographics there, right? And then you can look at the largest percentage of just by age, right? So if you look at it for the people who have used it a lot versus a little versus nothing at all, you'll see that the largest uh, group of people are essentially from the ages of 30 to 49, right? And then if you look at uh, education levels, you know, uh, some college, college grad, post grad, and then you look at lower income, middle income, and upper income, who are actually taking advantage of this technology. So, a lot of disparity. I think that we should change that by everybody getting more familiar with ChatGPT, right? So, the way that ChatGPT uh, works best, in my opinion, is to give it context, tell it what action you want it to perform, and then tell it what output, how you want the data back, or how you want that information back, right? So if you use the framework of context, action, and output, that's the best way I've seen in my experience to uh, execute ChatGPT. And I'll show you a couple of other real life examples on where I'm layering the context, uh, the specific action I'm, ask, um, I'm asking it to do, and then telling it the format that I want the output in, right? And it can do a lot of different things, right? So, so um, when you're doing a lot of web marketing and you do, uh, and your site gets popular, people try to hack it. I had, I have had one of my uh, smaller sites hacked. Didn't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> so I went to ChatGPT and looked at some of the output that I was getting when I was um, performing some of the functions, and I gave it all the output. Like typically, it'll tell you that you can't do this, and you get this response when your site when you try to do this on the site, right? And it gave me all this text, and I was like, I understand bits and pieces of it, right? But not 100%. So what did I do? I threw all of it into ChatGPT. And I said, I have, uh, I try specifically what I was trying to do, I was trying to delete a writer. So when they hack your site, they basically impersonate you and then start creating content that you really don't want out there, right? And I said, well, I'm trying to delete this user on my site, but every time I do this, I'm getting an HTTP 500 error, right? And it said that, you know, it tells me just general information. And then I wanted to say, uh, I wanted to include additional context telling them that, telling ChatGPT that I believe it's hacked. So what do I do now that I think it's not just a normal, like website uh, maintenance issue? It then gave me an entire readout of what I can do to, you know, scan for malware, uh, update the WordPress themes, change passwords, remove suspicious users, which I was originally trying to do. And then it told me to uh, restore from a clean backup. So went through all the litany of the top and then dug even deeper on how to actually restore a website from a clean installation. So not the most, um, I guess, exciting example, but if you ever get your site hacked, take the chat, see what you can do. It'll uh, give you at least surface level instructions and then you can dive a little bit deep, right? So include text, three key takeaways. Include the text, give examples, guide the outcome, and then once you're satisfied, where it said restore from clean backup, dig a little deeper and ask chat how do you do that specifically. Uh, second use case, ad copy, right? Some of us are marketers, some of us are not, but there's a lot of marketing going on if you want to communicate. Uh, ChatGPT has excellent strategies and methodologies for you to get better at copywriting, right? So 
Uh, what you can do in this specific instance, I told it to extract the tone and voice from other example LinkedIn ads. So as much context as you can give it will give you the best outcome that you're looking for overall, right? So not just one data set, um, multiple data sets, multiple uh, examples, right? So I told it extract the voice, the voice and tone, right? So if you're not used to writing ad copy, um, this can actually give you a really, really good way to understand why these ads are working by extracting the voice and tone, right? And then what you can do is dig a little deeper and tell it to give you additional ad copy pillars that would be applicable for any topic, right? So you go specific, you get your example, and then you tell ChatGPT to broaden it out, and it'll give you the core principles of, or the core pillars of what you're trying to communicate or what was communicated in your previous ads, right? So I'm not saying it's cheating, but it's kind of like cheating. <laughs> and you're able to take somebody else's hard copy, uh, hard working copy, take that, extract the voice and tone, and apply it to your specific use case. Three um, uh, key takeaways from that. Multiple examples also work really well. Uh, get the core tenets of uh, you know what makes it good, and then obviously dig a little dig a little bit deeper in order to extend beyond and make it more generally applicable. Google Sheets scripts. This is the third use case, right? So, um, me and the marketing team we had a huddle, and we had a fictional um, idea of like blueberries and creating blueberries and blueberry scones and. Uh, you know, what we could do, just an idea of like marketing practice, like what can we do to promote blueberry skills, right? One of the things you can do uh, with ChatGPT, they can actually uh, create these things called calculators. So imagine, um, you know, you might apply for a mortgage today with a mortgage calculator when you're, you know, sending your information and it does all the calculations for you. You can create calculators about anything. And ChatGPT will give you ideas on, uh, let's say you have the topic of blueberry skills. Uh, it gave us five different ideas around uh, achieving the perfect blueberry scone. And not only do you get the calculator, like the idea of the calculator, right? So one of this was the scone ingredient converter, so you can adjust the recipes for each batch and size. You also have the texture calculator, you have the scone baking time calculator, and the scone estimated yield that will calculate the measurements. So these are all ideas, right? How do you make those calculators? Um, if you do not want to play around in Google Sheets uh, and create or Excel and make it that way, you can actually create a script and tell ChatGPT to create a Google Sheets script that will actually be the calculator that you want um, to make, right? So think about it this way, is that if you are not really great at coding or scripting, you can, um, Use ChatGPT to create the script that'll do all the work for you, and then it'll tell you how to implement it. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So long story short, we're no longer relying on dev teams for small apps. We allow our IT and our dev teams and our smart IT guys to work on bigger things. They don't have to come, we don't have to bother them with small things. We can actually do it ourselves. And ChatGPT creates code based on an input and it can actually correct itself. So let's say you implement the script, it doesn't work. You can take the output, the feedback that you get from Google telling you that it didn't work and put it back in and it'll auto correct itself. And then you'll get an updated script that'll actually work. So it's actually really amazing and troubleshooting. Um, and it'll also tell you how to implement those scripts. So quiz time. Um, previously, I had mentioned a uh, study on the usage of ChatGPT. Do we know, uh, does anybody know who conducted that research? Uh, the source was credited to Pew Research. All right, and do you know how many, uh, what percentage of adults actually uh, use ChatGPT? Uh, let's see, I want to say it was roughly, it was either 14 or 15. You got it, 14 percent. There's refreshments in the back if uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, fourth use case here, tables and checklists, right? 
So what's really good is that uh, if you have a large data set, you can have chat GPT. If you instruct it and tell it, well, this is a data set about, um, for this instance, um, I wanted to create a SEO checklist, right? A comprehensive technical SEO checklist, right? So I had a, a large, basically I went to the internet and grabbed all the recommendations for what you should do for as an SEO checklist because I wanted it to be vast and complete, right? Then I told it, take all that data and you can actually tell it to categorize it, right? And um, I had it categorize it by um, technical SEO, site architecture, content audit, all the technical stuff, right? And then what I wanted to do was make sure that I had an SOP for my team. So I told it to create a, uh, a table uh, for the technical SEO category, right? So for this category, create a table and create an SEO checklist. And then I told it to make sure that the output was in the form of a command. So if a person is looking, or if I, have, I hand this document off to my team, I don't want them to see it conceptually. I want them to see it as instructions. So that's why I gave it an example of an instruction, an instructive, um, uh, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, instruction or command, and to actually uh, make sure that this output here was in that same sort of format in town. Does that make sense? So if you're creating a, a checklist for people to do, you don't want them to say, oh, just, you know, uh, site architecture, right? And give a description. You say, no, go do this specifically, then do this, then do that. And ChatGPT can change the tone and create that for you. The other thing about this is that it's recursive, right? So the instructions, so it builds upon what you previously entered. So that's why I say a lot of data or as many examples as possible um, that you enter, it'll actually know the history of what you entered and build upon that and then give you responses. Make sense? Uh, another use case, list and ideation, right? So I do a lot of SEO and about industries that I'm semi-familiar with. Uh, this one was about pottery for beginners, right? So I know a little bit about pottery, not that much. I told, I asked ChatGPT to give me a hundred uh, two-word key, technical keywords about the main keyword pottery for beginners. Why this is amazing is because when you think about pottery, you may think about clay, you may think about hand building, you may think about kiln, but you might not think about bisque firing, right? That's something I was completely unaware of, right? And it allows for me to start there with these lists of topics and then dive in deeper. And you can tell it how many of those examples you want, right? So that goes back to the framework of context, action, and uh, what was it, output as far as the format and what you want, right? Now, I also then took that list and said, well, this is a slightly different use case. Did the same thing, and I said, create a list of common questions or FAQs uh, using inductive coding, right? So that just means that I want variables in the keywords. Um, let me skip over that, because uh, that might distract from what I'm getting at, is that imagine you had the ability to insert um, a part of a phrase, right? So how to X for Y, right? You can use ChatGPT to fill in the X and Y. And essentially, that's what we did here, and I had it categorize the um, style of FAQ. So you can use that to fill in the blanks, essentially. So you don't need to know everything, you, know, you need to just know how to set up the framework, and you can have it dynamically insert the specifics. Make sense? All right, now we're coming up to the close of this, but the one thing I want you guys to take a look at is that no matter what you do, there's probably some model or framework that you were either trained on or that you're aware of, right? There's probably five to seven other models that could help support. So thinking about ad copy, right, or decision making, right? There's the ADA model for ad copy, there, which is the attention interest, um, uh, I think it's desire and attraction or something like that, right? And they have all these acronyms, right? And then you have the PASS formula, the FAD formula. You also have the same sort of thing, framework and model for decision making. So rational decisions, 
bound reality, uh, rationality models, satisfaction models, right? So what you can do if you are struggling to figure out what model to apply, like let's think SWOT analysis or something like that, you can actually have a whole list, have ChatGPT tell you the other models that you may want to consider, and then stick your problem in that specific model, and then have it uh, potentially answer your question using that model, now that you know that there's additional models available, right? So why this is important is because you want variety, you know, in some of the analysis and maybe some of the decisions that you're making, right? And the model that you might have been trained on may not be the one that's most appropriate so you can learn additional models. So um, just a quick tip when it comes down to creating tables, right? You can tell it to create a table, um, you know, with the top 10 copyright models and frameworks and include the pros and cons. It can create the table for you, right? But you don't want to use more than two to five factors because it just begins to break the table formatting, right? So pros, cons, two factor or two features. But then um, start with 10 and then um, expand and ask for more. Because when you get too big, it just breaks the table, breaks the format, it starts to add an HTML code and you don't really want that. If you just want the simple answer, start with 10 and then expand from there and say, give me some more. Uh, the final hack is to upgrade to Chat GPT Plus. It's 20 bucks a month. It also gives you access to Chat GPT 4. Now you have additional formats that can actually um, uh, that you can actually um, get outputs, right? And the reason that those work is because people are coding on top of Chat GPT and adding a plugin. So imagine it's like um, upgrades to your vehicle. You have your core vehicle. You might want to put like a, a bike rack on the top or something like that. These are the plugins that sit on top of ChatGPT that have specific functionality. So ChatGPT4 connects to the internet. Um, it also has access to these plugins. Uh, the plugin I'm using here is show me diagrams. So imagine we combine all the stuff that we learned before, like uh, different models and all that sort of stuff. We can then put those models of decision making into a diagram. And now you have an infographic if you're trying to market online or explain a concept to other people. Um, the last thing is that if you're using the free version of ChatGPT, occasionally you're running into capacity issues where they say it's too busy. I don't think it happens as much and as frequently as um, anymore, but I got frustrated with it because I had a lot of stuff to do, so I just upgraded to the uh, ChatGPT Plus. I'm sorry, what's the difference between Plus and 4 again? So ChatGPT Plus is the paid version, right? And in some cases, if you're just using the free version, you don't get access to ChatGPT 4. Exactly, the... with the internet access and connectivity okay. and all, all of right. the plugins. Thank you. Yep. So we have one more bonus tip. ChatGPT can tell jokes. Uh, does anybody know the answer to this? Why was the computer cold at the office? Because it left its windows open. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you want to connect with me and get more information, uh, you can reach me at art level at uh, or art at levelmediagroup.com, or you can reach out to us at uh, markonline.com. Uh, are you going to be sending copies of your slides?